50, this is for you. Ooh, from Hans, from Drawer, from Skellington, uh, Mr. Skellington, and from me. It's time. Today a boy, tomorrow a man. Ooh, plentiful. As in two times more vault ores. Ah? Hello. A village, you say? Ah. Hmm. Yes. Oh. Hello there. Aha. Uh -huh. Nope. Third time's the charm. Nope. Hmm. Oh, Echo Gem. Fourth time the charm. No. I'm getting greedy, but loot. I, I gotta go. Hmm, quite scary room for this, but... Hopefully, this is not a mistake. I wanna become a big boy. And Boogeyman is super tanky today. It's going down. Nice. Time for the big 5-0. Yes! There we go. And check out the loot! What an incredible run! That's crazy! Echo gem! Stuff! Boop! Wars! Statue! Handsome! Trader! Hello! More stuff! Pandora's box! Ooh! 62 relic booster packs! With a new relic, and actually, oh, I've done it! That's a set! That's my first relic set, the miner. I'll get back to that a little bit later, but that's great success. Vault gear? Uh, trash. <laughs> and the boss crate. Hmm, unidentified relic. Uh, I think I have that one. Yep. <laughs> more vault gear though. And more rubbish. All in all, great success. And 50. Hello, episode 24. And level 50. This is super exciting in so many ways. I don't even know where to start. Maybe I should start by making up the relic, which is completely unrelated to level 50, but yes. So the way it works is that when you get five pieces of one set, you can craft them together and they can be however you want, like the, the, this is fine, this is fine, this is fine, and you, you get the point. A relic statue. And once I have crafted it, I have now added a permanent 30 seconds to the vault. And 30 seconds, is a lot. Well, I mean, it, it's 30 seconds. Anyway, if I would collect the miner set again and craft up another statue of the miner set, that doesn't add another 30 seconds. I, I could use that just for decoration. But the first one crafted is 30 seconds permanently. So, brilliant. Relic set, check. Now today's episode is gonna be pretty packed. Now that I'm level 50, I wanna run a treasure room because the loot tier just upgraded, which is very, very exciting. So I think, I think the next thing I want to do is craft up my treasure key just so I haven't overlooked anything anywhere. And for one treasure key, I need four key pieces. And then I need one key mold, which, which actually does cost four echo gems. Hmm. I'm saying hmm because I do have a quest of making my first Echo Pog, which requires eight Echo Gems. With two ores, I mean, I'm probably at a point where I can make this unless I get super unlucky. Didn't think about the key mold. Oh, I'm having second thoughts now. Do I gamble on a treasure room or do I go the more safer route of making the Echo Pog now? Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> Treasure room, of course. Yes. One, two, three, four. And then I also need a netherite cluster, which... And that that is a perfect black opal, but I do have all of these things. One netherite cluster. And that plus the echo gems gives me the key mold. And then... Blank key. This is very exciting. Next, I need a key anvil. This thing. Luckily, I've done really good on netherite lately. Like that. Perfect. And the good thing with this anvil is that it never breaks. Now, in order to use my blank key, I need to specify what type of treasure door it opens. And to do that, I need a cluster. Cluster. One of these clusters made out of the legendary gems. And it doesn't really matter which one I make. So because of that, I'm going to go with the one I have most gems of, which I believe is Ashium. And I actually do have quite a few of those broken down. I'm going to need eight of these. And then I'm going to need another perfect black opal. And then I put them together like this. And there's my cluster. And this is pretty self-explanatory. Key. Cluster. Ashium key. And this key can open an Ashium door inside the vault. And hopefully lead us to great success with loot. Now our treasure room contains two treasure chests and they are affected by things like luck and chest rarity. The best treasure chests are Omega and the most common ones, well, they, they, they're common. The higher the rarity, the better the items and the more luck you have, the more items you get. Basically just like any chest inside the vault, but these are, these are very special. Now, because we're level 50, we have also unlocked a bunch of new talents, including Artisan increases the quality of vault gear crafted by the player. The quality of the gear impacts the likelihood of what rarity it will roll. Having at least one level in Artisan allows the player to use fabrication jewels, which can be used together with an identified gear piece in an anvil to attempt to extract a random modifier onto an Artisan scroll. And at level 1 we are... And at level 1 we will be able to make polished vault gear, which is most likely going to be common and can no longer be scrappy. This is a talent if we want to get into crafting vault gear. However, we could also go treasure hunter. Increases the chance of finding rare loot in vault chests, treasure chests, altar chests and boss crates by applying additional luck levels. You know, the same thing I have on my chest plate that gives me more loot when looting. The only problem is, is that these lock each other out so i can only be either artisan or treasure hunter and obviously right now when looting this treasure room it would be much better to go treasure hunter however these can also not be untaught as in there no flask of regret targeting artisan or treasure hunter so it's a pretty big boy choice and for now i'm actually gonna choose neither <laughs> i'm such a troll instead i think I'm going to focus on Soul Hunter. I currently have 600 skill points, which would actually allow me to go uh, to level 3. Essentially doubling all soul shards I find. And I think that's very valuable. Yes. Now I could double that again if I unlearn Elvish. And that was kind of always the plan, I think. Oh, and I actually have a Flask of Regret for Soul Hunter. These are quite expensive to make. They require you to have infused eternal souls, which are super expensive. So that makes the choice a lot easier knowing that I have one of these. Because I believe the Elvish one was quite cheap. Yes. I'm gonna do it. Fall damage sucks, but 200% more soul shards is gonna be fantastic. And then the way this works is that this flask can be any flask of regret. So I'm just gonna pick something that I'm not intending on using, like step for example. Oh. Actually, that's a super expensive one to make. Wow, 16 Echo Gems to make one. Okay, well, I'll pick something else. Um, barbaric. I have three Barbaric. I'll pick one of the Barbaric ones. And then like that. Nice. Drink this. And boom. Six unspent skill points. But of course, I, I take full damage <laughs> once again. But yes, that feels really, really good. 200% soul shard gain. Now with that done... I would like to do my treasure run. And this crystal, the one that we did a few episodes ago, has luckier, as in plus two luck levels. And that applies also in treasure rooms. So I think this crystal is actually a brilliant way to do this. However, it would be nice to see if we can get even more good stuff on there. So time to reinvest some Beniotite. 
that was 64 ores. Oh, almost three stacks. I have 143 catalyst fragments. Wow. I think I'm going to craft up as many as I can here. And I'm hoping to get random positive ones. That's, that's a good one, but not a random positive. That's not a random positive. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh, that's terrible. Lucky. Oh, that's actually really good. Okay, it's not random, but this guarantees to add lucky to our crystal. There's a random one, but also with a curse. There we go. <laughs> one. Oh, it's raging. Mobs deal 100% more damage. No, I don't dare to do that, even with the super healing. How expensive is it to make another table? Hmm. Not that expensive. I think I should do that. Yes. And I'll put that there. It very quickly gets unorganized with Catalyst. So what I'm going to do is put all of the random positive in here. And then all the static positive in here. Now, let's check the crystal with the random ones. Safe zone would be nice, but locked is not worth it. And everything else is kind of bad. So... I think I'm I think I'm going to apply this one unless the negative modifier is really bad. Let's see. Trapped. Oh, that is terrible. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. However, it is one more luck level and treasure chests can never be trapped. So it's more for the gilded chests and the other chest in the vault. Oh, I may regret this. But I'm doing it. Oh. I was hoping to find safe zone. You see, safe zone will completely remove trapped if I add it on top. Hmm, maybe I should make just a few more catalysts. Or actually, maybe I should start with re-rolling the bad ones I got. After all, it's definitely worth investing in this crystal because it is our treasure key run. Safe zone! Safe zone and hard! Oh, that's a good, that's a good one. The race is difficulty, but no chest will be trapped, even if it has trapped on it. Brilliant. Now, every time I apply a catalyst, all of these modify rerolls, so it's always worth checking again. Extended would be nice, it adds two and a half minutes of time, but it would make me fragile, which makes my gear break quicker, and hungry, which may be a little bit annoying. Uh, maybe I'm, maybe, maybe I'm happy with the crystal like this. Yes, yes I am. Now there are a few things to keep in mind with this vault. Challenging and hard is going to make the mobs hit a lot harder. And also, they're going to be hitting with withering. So basically, I really need to try and avoid every single mob if I can. Luckily though, it does have personal space, so I won't have any mobs spawning around me. And should I get hit? I mean, hopefully, hopefully I can, I can take a hit or two and then start healing up with a healing ability, which gives me regeneration one inside the vault. This is, this is going to be very, very exciting. My first big boy crystal and the goal is to open an ashim door as well as looting as much as i possibly can from the gilded chest since i will have plus three luck in this vault so four luck levels that's four extra items potentially in every uh, every chest i open i am so overexcited for this vault what? oh uh, i've also i've also created or i'm bringing in my extra backpack with three boss crates empty ones so that i can put the stuff from the treasure room in there Oh, I just, I just hope I haven't forgot anything. Here we go. Look at all those modifiers. And as I said, I'm going to try and loot as much as I can as well without interacting with mobs. I'm not really wanting to fight the boss here either because of the fact that, well, it's going to be a very big, a very big boy boss. A little tennis altar never hurts though. Now treasure rooms inside vaults spawn in random places and the best way to spot them is on the minimap and so far I haven't seen any. Ooh, that's some good stuff. A Paxel charm! Oh, that's actually huge. Gilded chests, don't mind if I do. Look at how much stuff there's in these! Oh, level 50 as well. New loot tiers. That right there is a treasure room on the minimap. So what I want to do is try and find the entrance to that treasure room, which looks like it's right there. And there are mobs down there. I don't have fall damage protection anymore. I'll just eat a cobalt apple. And that's a bombing night door, so not the correct door. Not all treasure rooms are visible on the minimap, and there's actually a skill I could have taken here that would have helped me out. I think I'm gonna do that. While I'm inside the vault. This skill here, Hunter. By default, this locates mobs for you. Ouch! Okay, 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 yep. Yeah. Okay, I can't stand still like that. By default, this, this ability will locate mobs for me. But this specialization here changes it from mobs to chests. So, if I take that 
and then select Hunter. I can press it and yes, now it's going to show me all the chests. And this is one way of seeing treasure rooms. It only lasts for a few seconds though, so it was kind of dumb of me to dive down and get those ores. One thing I'm noticing that's new is the loot of runes, which seems to be a level 50 thing. And also crystalline burgers, which is food or XP food for Eternals, for my summons, of which I have none so far. But this does mean that I do have to make another dank for the runes because they're gonna take up a lot of inventory space. This isn't a great start, considering I've only seen one treasure room so far. Uh, this withering really hurts. Ooh, a crystal cave. That's a little bit of a bait in this vault. I don't want to spend any time here. Oh, but that's a treasure room, right? Maybe it's down. Yes, but that's a tubium door. Oh, I do want to I do want to loot this room, but also, as I said, I think that's going to be a bit of a bait. Oh, I'll take this galleon though. Oh, that's another key piece. I found another key piece. Wow. That was super lucky. Oh, and that is a treasure room down probably. Uh oh. Wait, I think this is it. I think I found it. I think that's an Ashim door. Uh, here, here we go. Yes, 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 yes. You can't break the doors or open them in any other way, by the way. What? There, there it is. This is a treasure room. And it's opened. Ooh, yes. Mine all of the ores. Every single ore inside a treasure room is always going to be a vault ore. None of them very high-end vault ores here, though. But that's okay. And then this chest and this chest are both treasure room chests. So what I'm going to do is get my crates out and put all of this stuff in there. And here is number one. We're hoping for better than common, but it's common. Look at all this stuff though, including a common plus wall chest plate. And an orb frame, which is the base of crafting skill orbs. And a pog! Oh my goodness, this is so good! As well as a bunch of modded stuff. This is great. An emerald furnace. Oh, an emerald furnace! It's one of the best furnaces in the game. Brilliant. Let's see the second one. It's also common. Rare plus boots, another orb frame. Common plus helmet as well. And a sterling dynamo, which is power generator from a mod that I don't currently have. All of the modded items that I get, I can use. Despite them not being, uh, despite them not being unlocked, that's the beauty of treasure room. So I got a lot of bonus stuff there, including a full pog. Wow, this was great. I think two old frames is also absolutely massive. And it's nice and peaceful in here as well because of personal space. I did it. I did it. I did it. I mean, I got a little bit lucky with the fact that I found the ash door. But that was great. Now I can focus on just looting as many gilded chests and loot as much other stuff as possible, making use of my luck modifiers inside this vault. Ooh, another two Paxel charms. Wow. Ooh, a village room. I don't know when I last had a portal. And <laughs> it's no portal here either. Uh. Ouch! The mobs really hurt in here. What? That was one hit from a spider. That's the withering. Ooh, Velara, my beloved. I gained a favor. <laughs> Not very good loot, though. <laughs> but thank you for the favor, Velara. About time, to be honest. <laughs> Three and a half minutes. Oh, I'm running out of time. There's so much loot left to get. Oh, and another village room. Come on. I don't even know if I would have time to do the portal if there was one. There is none. Okay. That's like eight in a row without finding... Oh, Omega. <laughs> without finding a portal. Ouch. Oh, husks. 
have started spawning inside the vaults now and they are or they can be very dangerous because they have high crit chances loot this can loot uh oh okay i really have to start heading back i'm quite far from the start i think and hopefully i remember where the start is hmm i've been here i think it's the next room <laughs> imagine not finding my way out running out of time for my treasure not bring it home with me. I think this may be the start room. Yes, yes, yes. All right, I'm done. My first big boy vault. I've got a ton of loot to show for. GG vault. I love level 50. Time to see how I did. I think first things first, I'm gonna check the things I have in my danks. And yeah, that's a healthy amount of star essence. What about Lenny? Oh, that's a lot of gems. Benny, 11 Vutak shards. I think that's a record. 52 skill essence. I may actually be able to make my first skill orb. Not to mention 95 relic booster packs. Yes. Ooh, I got a cupcake and another relic. Two relics. That one I already have and <laughs> that one I already have. Oh, that's really unlucky. Wendy with some ores. Most of these from the treasure room. And Jenny with, oh, a lot of burger pieces. Right, let's have a look at the crates. The first one, three, four, five, six traders, three statues, a Pandora's box, Ooh, more hearty apples. Five crystalline burgers, which are going to be very useful once I start getting my eternals. Two common plus vault gear pieces. So these can't be scrappy. And then a bunch of runes, which I definitely need to make room for in a dank. I think there are 16 in total, so I actually need two of the small danks, one red dank for the runes. But they are, as you can see, quite common right now. And they're actually really cool. What they do is they change the enchantment glint on your gear. So to demonstrate, let's take the orange rune. And if I combine these together, my boots become fiery orange. And I mean it, like they're they're massively glowing. They look really, really cool. I definitely do want to collect the runes and also they are just going to take up so much inventory space. So I need to make a dank for them. Now for the big crate, the crate with the treasure room stuff. Look at this. Bunch of vault gear, including rare plus boots. I'm trying to organize this a little bit. One key piece, which I found outside the treasure room. You can't find them inside. That means that I have two key pieces. One more statue. Two orb frames. And these are very expensive to craft. That's all black opal. I think 20 in total and a vault diamond block. And they are used to create skill orbs, which essentially just gives me a skill point. And I'm actually going to check. Do I have enough to make my first skill orb? 150, that sounds like a lot. Oh yes, that's seven. I have collected this over time. Wait, can I make two? Can I use both of these? Yes! Oh, this is huge. So those plus that gives me skill orbs, which again, I eat them and two unspent skill points, three unspent skill points without leveling up. Great success. I'm considering waiting for four skill points and go speed, but I would also really benefit from having another strength level. Hmm. I did take Soul Hunter, so I will be killing mobs. I guess, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do another strength level. That does add three base damage permanently. I also got four Paxel Charms. Oh, and I forgot to move the helmet over. Now, Paxel Charms are really not that expensive to make. I could probably make 20 or so if I broke down my Benutite, but... They require Vault Blacksmith, which is a research that I haven't taken. So finding them means that I don't have to craft them and I can just use them anyway. And what they do is that they will enhance your Paxel and give it a random buff or a random debuff. <laughs> Did someone say gamble? Well, here we go. Destructive. Destroys mind blocks. That's actually not terrible. Basically really good for clearing out spaces because, yeah, you don't get the blocks that it breaks. Not great inside the vault though because that also means that it breaks. Well, it can be good inside the vaults, I suppose, because you don't have to deal with the blocks you pick up. But breaking, breaking vault doors with it is not a good thing. Let's try one more on my other Paxel. Rush! Yes, that gives me haste one when I hold this Paxel, which means that I now have haste three while holding the Paxel. And then if I de-equip it, well, the haste will 
slowly run off, as you can see. Run off? No, wear off. Good English there, Skull. <laughs> but that's actually one of the better ones you can get. You can also get Fortunate, which would add another fortune level. I think that's the best one and most rare one. Better put this Paxel away so I don't misuse it in the vault. And also, speaking about Paxel, I can't believe that this Paxel survived that entire vault. I think it's time to retire it now, though. Long story short, packs of charms, great find. I also got a pog, which is obviously incredible, and a choice flask, some burgers, and some other assorted vault items, including oozing pizza, which is kind of like a burger, but a little bit worse. They can, however, be used to make a wholesome pizza, which is really good to give to my Eternals, which again, I don't have any Eternals yet, so I will just store these away for now. A sparkle tin and an Escalium unique ores. And the modded stuff. Now, I was hoping to find stuff for my refined storage. I did not. This is applied energistics, and this is applied energistics. So I got a little bit unlucky with finding the stuff that I haven't specced into. This is also applied energistics, actually. But the cool thing with the things that I find here is that they are things that I can use, even though I haven't researched them. So, for example, Industrial Foregoing, which is a mod that costs 20 knowledge to unlock... I just got two free machines from, a plant gatherer and a plant fertilizer. And I believe the plant gatherer, when given power, will gather plants in its area, which is this one block here. I mean, this could essentially become a pretty simple tree farm. I gotta try that out real quick. If I borrow this, put you there, power in the back, sapling there and bone mill it. Is it gonna do a thing? Oh! Oh, it is gathering it! Oh, that was cool! Now, obviously, if I had an upgrade for this, I could make this better, but... That works! That absolutely works! So what I could do is put a dispenser planting the saplings, and then I could make... I could make a makeshift tree farm out of this, which would actually be rather quick. But first, check out other stuff. I also got this Sterling Dynamo, which is a power generator. It can generate 40 RF per tick. Remember, my, my thing here generates 70 RF per tick. This requires me to put in some fuel, I think, and then, yes, that just generates out like a furnace. Oh, wow, that's quite a lot of power for two sticks. Yep, that's gonna come in handy. Oh, and a coal generator. That does the same thing, I believe. Oh, no, it, it requires me to actually use coal, but yes, it generates power using coal like a furnace, which is why it's called a... Oh no, it's a coal. Coal generator, not a furnace generator. I don't know. I think the biggest modded find is possibly maybe the plant gatherer, but also the emerald furnace. I also got an iron furnace, which is also better than a regular furnace, but the emerald furnace is the second best furnace in the game, only beaten by the rainbow furnace. Happy Pride Month, by the way. You, and then coal in here, and then let's try it with my acacia logs. That's very, very quick. That's very, very quick. In comparison, if I put it in here, oh, yes, 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 yes. That's a fantastic find, because I don't think it would be worth unlocking the furnace mod in quite a while, even though it's just one point. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's great. And I guess it's time to actually check these traders out. Ooh, and Paul is selling rare plus boots. Oh, that's right, because at level 50, traders get better. I, I should probably buy those boots. I mean, I do have a healthy amount of gold and stuff. Thank you. And speaking about vault gear, let's roll all of these pieces up. I think what I'm gonna do is do all the scrappy plus first, these four. And anything but scrappy is a bonus, and that's a non-scrappy chest plate, actually. Let's see. Weakening two cloud. Reach one. Poison immunity. Oh, and it's a rare one. Ooh, that's a good find. What about the chest plate? Nope. Let's do all of the common plus ones next. And remember, these cannot be scrappy. Even though that helmet looks scrappy, it's not scrappy. Nope, it is uh, it is very, very much terrible, but it's not scrappy. Sword. Oh, a leech sword! Yes! Doesn't have that high damage, but it's a leech sword. Oh! Oh, that is absolutely fantastic. Yes! I'm, I'm, I'm making the switch, I think. Chest plate. It's epic. It's seven armor. It's three levels, 2% parry. What, what is mine? Oh, my, mine is Omega. My armor, my chest plate is absolutely incredible. But still, 
it's gonna break one day and this is a really good replacement attack damage not that interesting and oh today is my lucky day that's an epic vendor with four levels an extra reach huh it started with this helmet it ended up with a bunch of good stuff my two rare plus boots now, i will say that i have really good boots but first pair oh they are absolutely awful and second pair uh, yeah they're not that great either i don't think i may save them as a as a backup now both of these idols are potentially much better than the one i have and then we have the sword which damage wise is quite far behind the axe but it does have leech so i think what i'm gonna do is invest eight vutax shards and four vutodai into a vutax crystal and get a modifier on here come on can i get some damage addition durability i mean it will last longer i still think i should make the switch besides the axe damage is including sharpness so let's see 11.92 and it swings faster than the axe strikes yeah, I, I think that's a good change. Oh, and I can put Sweeping Edge on it. And just a reminder, since I saw a few comments about this in the last episode, no, you cannot put Mending on Vault Gear. That would completely break the game balance, as Mending, in my opinion, is completely overpowered and makes finding new gear not as exciting. I am excited, however, about my new sword. Do I invest a little bit into one of these two? Yes. First level here half a heart i mean it's not bad with extra health but one one is the lowest it can roll one more attack damage i mean yeah i i think i think i'm gonna i'm gonna do more come on oh. <laughs> and wills i'm sorry that's another level in reach Oof. that's really good for opening chests from a distance or looting yep 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 you can stay away from mobs Let's do the last one and resistance that's that's not bad at all now i kind of want to do the i don't idol as well though <laughs> now every vault god has a unique feature wendor has reach and something else i can't remember but i don't can roll leech which would be incredible so oh, that's three percent resistance not bad attack speed is terrible though oh well i mean I'm already the knockback resistance. Knockback resistance is not terrible because it's really annoying when you get knocked back while looting or while pillaring up. But yeah, I, th I think this Wender Idol is a lot better than the Idona. By the way, if you're interested in what gear can roll and you're playing yourself, make sure to check out our webpage, vaulthunters.gg. It has a very, very good section where you can see all the different things that can appear as modifiers on gear. Plus, the webpage looks awesome. Anyway, new idol, new sword. This is looking really good. Now, I didn't get to check out soul hunting today. I simply didn't have time, but... Oh! That's an Echo Pog! For 982! Oh! I don't have time! We're out of video time! But it's gonna expire in a couple of hours! Oh no! I need... I need the Echo Pog! I, 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 I can't, I can't pass up on that. I cannot pass up on that. Editing is cal. Can we make some magic happen? Can I run another vault? Can I try and get to 900? Please. Hello. I'm editing is cal. Cliffhanger? <laughs> no, no, no cliffhangers today. Okay, don't, don't smash your keyboard. I, we, I, I'll do it today. I'll just make a super fast montage of me making this crystal and then running the vault killing mobs. Oh no. Well, that's a problem. Oh no, I have twerk level three. I can twerk sugarcane. Yes. Done, 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 pain. Oh, goodness sake. What I meant to say is... Done. Time to get some soul shards. 706 to be exact. And this will have to be a very short vault montage. Because otherwise editing Escal will get all cranky and, and yeah, I, I just can't deal with that. I'm actually hoping to get crowded. Oh, I got crowded. 
difficult though is not great because then they're gonna hurt more and fast is not great because then I'm gonna have less time to do this. Oh, hello there. Hmm. Definitely worth it. I have no idea what just happened. That's not supposed to happen, but okay. I'm done. I'm done. I've done it. Woo! Really lucky to get the crowded modifier randomly, but that was hectic. I also forgot my Paxel, and look at my gear! Look at how much damage my gear took, specifically my helmet. I suppose I haven't plated it. I could always plate it. I definitely need to get stronger somehow. I need to do more damage. But I did manage to collect the soul shards. Soul Hunter is a really good talent. And I got a little bit of loot from the puzzle room. But here's the big thing. Echo Pog. Nice. And that means that I can now craft... The controller, which in turn means that I can set up a storage system and move. But that will have to wait until next time because this episode is omega long. I hope you enjoyed it though. I've had a ton of fun. Thank you so much for watching. I really do hope that you did enjoy it. If you did, please do hit the like button down below. And if you're brand new, consider subscribing. And I will see you in the next episode.